In the first season of The Simpsons, the writers populated Springfield with a variety of colorful and varied personalities, characters who would eventually become regulars. And most of these characters did become staples of the series. But then there is Herman, a character who was originally meant to appear often, but whose usage fell off almost immediately. So that begs the question, what happened to Herman? Why did he stop being used? And most importantly, what the heck is going on in Herman's head? This is going to be a slightly different Simpsons mystery episode, because there aren't a lot of clear answers here. Herman is a very minor character, the writers never really went too in depth with him. This is going to be more of a character analysis, looking at his usage and figuring out why he didn't fit the series. That being said, Herman is a very mysterious and sinister figure in Springfield. There's a reason why he's been in this video series credits since the beginning. There's definitely something up with this guy. Let's start by going over his major episode roles. His first, and most major appearance, was in Season 1's Bart the General, being Grandpa's war consultant in Bart's battle against Nelson. He's modeled after the prolific writer John Swartzwelder, and his voice is basically Harry Shearer doing an impression of George Bush. No, the first one. There we go. The original idea for this character was that every time he would appear, he would offer a different explanation for how he lost his arm. He explains in this episode that he lost his arm hanging it out of a school bus window. The running joke idea was immediately abandoned, however, as this is the only instance of it. There was supposedly a later one about him losing it in a bowling ball return, but this line was cut by the writers. Interestingly, Herman's school bus incident may have been referenced by Ms. Krabappel earlier in the series. In Homer's Odyssey, she reminds the students on the bus of the old student who lost his arm sticking it out of the window and Bart does an impression of it. Homer's Odyssey and Bart the General were the third and fifth episodes produced, so it's plausible that this was a deliberate reference. Anyway, his next major role was in Old Money, when Grandpa stops by his store to get B. Simmons a present. Grandpa later comes back to buy Napoleon's hat. He has a minor role in Homer's Barbershop Quartet, selling stuff at the flea market. Skinner finds his old prisoner helmet there, to which Herman comments what a small world it is. In Homer the Vigilante, he sells weapons to Homer's angry mob and shows him a miniaturized atom bomb. Despite Herman's warning, Homer rides the bomb anyway. Herman is the villain of the Springfield Connection, running a counterfeit jeans operation out of Homer's car hole and later holding Homer hostage. In 22 short films about Springfield, he kidnaps Chief Wiggum and Snake for, uh, nefarious purposes. And then Wiggum kills him with a katana. Or Milhouse knocks him out. Either one. In the Omega Man sequence of Treehouse of Horror 8, Herman shows Homer a bomb shelter before he, and the rest of Springfield, is blown up by a nuke. This is his last major role in the series for 15 years. He still continues to appear as a background character, but as an active participant in the plot, this is where Herman disappears. Herman doesn't have a speaking role until Season 24's flashback episode, To Cur With Love. This is the flashback about young Homer and his childhood dog Bongo. Herman is trying to hitch a ride going to piano class, and gets his arm torn off by Clancy Wiggum's dog catcher truck. He later wrote a book called A Farewell to Arm, in which we also learn his last name is Herman, with two N's. Because names are hard. The weirdest part is, that after 15 years of no lines, he is a part of the very next episode in season 24, Homer Goes to Prep School. He appears as one of the Doomsday Preppers, and they host their meetings in his store. Isn't that weird? 15 years of virtually no usage, and then two in a row. It's practically a Herman Renaissance on The Simpsons. This was his final speaking role thus far. I guess the writers got tired of him again. Overall, Herman's characterization has been pretty consistent over time. I think the word I'd use to describe how they portray him is shady. Herman is a very shady individual, you know? In Old Money, they make it clear that his goods are not necessarily authentic. 
the likelihood of this being Napoleon's hat is about the same as that one being McKinley's. He is portrayed as being someone who would take advantage of a sucker like Grandpa. He's also the type who would keep an atom bomb behind his store or run a counterfeit jeans operation. There is certainly a streak of violence with Herman as well. When he takes Homer hostage, they make it clear that Herman is totally ready to shoot Marge when she approaches. And I think his run-in with Chief Wiggum and Snake kind of speaks for itself. Although now that I think about it, was all of this just revenge for Wiggum tearing off his arm so many years ago? Hmm. In Bart the General, they very deliberately point out that maybe Herman has a couple screws loose. The guy is furiously scribbling over old war treaties, and is then stabbing a punching bag with the bayonet yelling, DIE DIE! Which, as we all know, means THE THE. But even still, Herman is portrayed as a little crazy. I actually kind of wonder whether Herman was ever in the military himself. I don't really want to speculate about this, because questioning someone's military service is kind of yucky. But the thing about Herman is that no one actually says he served in the military. It's all sort of an assumption on our part. He's introduced by Grandpa as just the owner of the military antiques shop. And when Bart asks him about his missing arm, he immediately pivots to the bus thing. He doesn't say he lost it on a bus in the military, for example. Grandpa is the one who talks about war memories and offers specific training advice to Bart. Herman is just the general strategy guy. You look at his outfit and see his missing arm and assume it was lost in the war. But that's the point of his joke. He's supposed to reveal that it wasn't military related, just some random mishap. We never circle back to actually lock down whether he actually served or not. It could be that Herman was in the military and then continued his passion via antiques and weaponry. It could be that something happened overseas that rattled him. Or maybe he's just a slightly unhinged civilian drawn to the violence of war. Maybe he couldn't pass the psychological exam and the army didn't accept him. I kind of prefer the idea that Herman is just a big phony, kind of like some of his wares. Officially though, I think we're supposed to assume Herman is ex-military, but it has never been confirmed by the writers one way or another. Your guess is as good as mine. The real question at this point is, what happened to him? What was it about Herman that didn't make him stick to the series? Why did he go the way of Marvin Monroe or the Winfields? He's definitely still around today, so why do the writers not use him? First of all, he definitely has a relevancy issue. He is a character that is directly tied to Grandpa. His first two appearances are from when Grandpa visits his store. He's not friends with Homer or anything. It's not like he would appear when Homer needs to shop or talk to someone. So the plot is only going to require him in specific Grandpa scenarios, who is already a secondary character himself. Herman being the owner of a military antiques and weapons store makes his relevancy a little worse. There aren't a lot of stories that would require the characters visit such a store. It's not like something like the Quickie Mart, where any adult character would conceivably visit regularly. Herman's military antiques is a very specialized store. It is only plot relevant in a story like Homer the Vigilante. Otherwise, the writers would have to invent a reason why he's needed in a scene. Then there's the George Bush impression thing, which also makes him a bit of a relic. A George H.W. impression in 1996 or 2000 is decidedly less relevant. The impression is more nostalgic than anything these days. Secondly, Herman has a bit of a tone problem. I don't think he's a particularly fun character. The guy is super shady and can be villainous and stuff, which can be fun sometimes, but he's never written in a particularly lighthearted way. In the Springfield connection, his abduction of Homer is taken very seriously. It's not like he's bumbling or anything. He literally grabs Homer, covers his mouth, and silently prepares to shoot Marge. I think his role in 22 short films about Springfield effectively killed his character, to be honest. I know he was in the Treehouse of Horror afterwards, but this was his last canonical role for a while. In the commentary for this episode, showrunners Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein mentioned that they thought it was lucky that he existed as a character already, that they already had someone who resembled the pawn shop owner from Pulp Fiction. Now, I might be overreacting to the parody, given its dark subtext, but after doing a joke like this one, 
I don't know how much the audience really wants this character to be around afterwards. You know what I mean? It would be like if they went for the full Psycho parody with Skinner and actually showed him conspiring to kill a woman in a shower. It would be a funny reference and would fit Skinner, but you would kind of look at him weird afterwards. Maybe the problem with Herman is that he's not a lighthearted enough character to get away with his evil deeds. Someone like Mr. Burns can do the Raging Abe Simpson episode and get away with it, because Mr. Burns is such an inherently silly character. Herman isn't. I think Herman was also hurt by the fact that other characters simply do his jobs better. Apu is a better and more versatile store owner, for example. Then there's a character like Mo, who started to get all the jokes about his sketchy dealings in his back room. Like the pandas, the whale, or his Russian roulette game. These all very easily could have been Herman jokes, but why bring him in when Homer already goes to Moe's? Let's just use Mo instead. And if we need a general criminal type, we can just use Snake, who is a more charming personality than Herman. Maybe it's the accent. If Apu is the shop owner, Mo is the shady one, and Snake is the common criminal, then what does Herman really have? Guns and military antiques. When it comes down to it, Herman is just a niche character who really didn't fit the needs of the show. If the show were centered around Grandpa, or if Homer were ex-military or something, you could organically write him into scenarios. If he had a strong running joke attached to him, like how Dr. Nick does, you could bring him in randomly for quick appearances. But Herman's joke was abandoned almost immediately. Why would we really care about this extremely minor character's explanations? We wouldn't care because we don't care about him. Combine this with Herman's rather serious tone, other characters stealing his jobs, and some of his dodgy reactions, and you have a character not long for the series. Sorry, Herman. But hey, he's still stuck around longer than Dr. Marvin Monroe, so maybe Herman is doing something right.